Hi and welcome to our session. I'm Emma Major and this is Laura Neal and we've been asked to share our thoughts on how we find strength in the Lord, particularly related to our vocations as church leaders living with disability and chronic ill health. But before we get into that, let's introduce ourselves. Laura, over to you. Thank you. Yes, as Emma said, my name is Laura. I live in Norfolk in the east of England. Um, I trained as a lay minister with a youth work focus um, and quickly switched that to an online ministry due to my own chronic illness and disability. Um, I am unable to socialise or go to church very often um, without the online world due to my chronic fatigue and pain. And so end up spending a lot of my time at home. Um, but due to setting up you belong and founding that as a space for online connections um, I'm able to be part of that online community with Christians who understand me and get me um, and that that's me yeah so over to you Emma thanks so I'm wife to Mike mum to our teenager Rachel I'm a licensed lay pioneer minister that is so much of a mouthful isn't it <laughs> a lay pioneer at St Nicholas Church in Early which is near Reading and I lead fresh expressions of church like uh, missional communities, forest churches and online. I have love ministering online. It's worth saying I'm not wearing these glasses because I'm cool. I <laughs> live with a neurological condition called FND, which caused me to lose my eyesight overnight seven years ago and started using a wheelchair. Um, what else about me? I'm creative. I can't imagine a day without creativity. Mm. And this year um, I started caught COVID last year I'm living with the pain and fatigue of long COVID and writing poetry and painting digitally while I'm resting has just been essential for my mental health and my spiritual well-being so I start every day painting and writing and praying and just being with God and I've been amazed at the way God's worked through this so um yeah that's enough of us an introduction I think is it worth talking about the chronic illnesses we live with and let's hear a bit about the reality of our days Laura what's it like mm, yeah so I was initially diagnosed with something really rare um, called achalasia back in 2014 um, which is believed to be an autoimmune disease but it's still uncertain um, and basically it's where your esophagus um, is closed above the stomach so you can't eat or drink things um, but it also causes pain as the esophagus tries to push food through that it can't so although the surgery I had at the end of the year was amazing and made it possible for me to eat again I still deal with that chest pain which apparently is like a heart attack although I've never had a heart attack as far as I'm aware I couldn't compare it myself um, but yeah it's not a nice pain and it comes out of nowhere and sometimes can last for hours um, and there's no treatment for that um, and then coming out of that illness I realized that I've started to get better um, being able to eat however my pain and fatigue throughout my body were increasing and I was told initially that it was just a, a side effect of being unwell, um, recovering from surgery, things like that. Um, but instead of getting better, it got worse. And so I was then diagnosed with ME um, and a little bit later on hypermobility stuff um, started happening. My jaw, my shoulder, different joints would come out. My spine is misaligned um, and ended up being diagnosed with hypermobility spectrum disorder slash EDS, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Um, and also um, I just struggle with bits of pain and things all over the place so um, that's kind of my my conditions um, and the fatigue and the pain together are the two key things that make me um, fit in along with a lot of people in the chronic illness community who have that in common um, so a lot of my day is spent in bed I would say 90% of my day is spent in bed um, I'm in bed right now as I'm recording this um, but I end up trying to work from my bed and doing things from my bed that I enjoy so I am able to read and I watch films and um, I have a pet rat, which I know not everyone is a, a huge fan of the rodents, but um, they're good fun um, and they keep me company. Um, and so I, yeah, I do a lot of that. And then also You Belong has been wonderful in that it's, it's been able to be somewhere that I can find friends. Um, I've connected with Emma through You Belong, which has been wonderful. And also it's been my, my church because I've not been able to get outside to an on-site church um, Obviously, COVID has made that tricky for a lot of people, but I haven't been able to go back in the same way a lot of people have done. Um, and unfortunately, some churches have stopped their live streaming and things like that, which have made it even harder. So, 
you belong is basically my community and the four walls around me are my world so that's kind of the sort of things that happen in my life it sounds limited um, but honestly I can't remember anything beyond that um, and like Emma said being able to connect with people online um, and having various hobbies creative hobbies I like craft I like baking things like that um, that's what makes me me and keeps me going in my life um, as well as God obviously <laughs> um, but yeah over to you Emma how do your various um illnesses and things that you've picked up along the way yeah a whole load of terms and I was thinking oh, I'm very aware of what that means but to lots of people they have no idea exactly about the things lots of us live with exactly yeah so how does so, that impact your life yeah so I've shared that I have FND so my brain doesn't communicate properly with my body it's always fun in my body I tell you <laughs> but actually I did come to terms with that and I, I I'm more affected by the life before COVID and after COVID mm. so becoming a blind wheelchair user is not a walk in the park or even a wheel walk <laughs> I went from having a fully active life driving my car 60 hours work a week and I loved it mm. to suddenly I couldn't leave the house I mean it was mm. it was really traumatic yeah but I had lots of people around me, church people, family, friends, counselling offered a huge amount. And with the help of technology and I got personal assistance funded, I was able to continue my, my life. I was able to mother. I was able to be a wife. I was able to follow God. And mm. I felt really blessed in that. Mm. And then there was the pandemic and <laughs> I'm I'm one of the shielders, let's just say that. Mm. So I was shielding from February and <laughs> spent a lot of time with my own church, getting our church online. But despite all the best safety measures caught COVID in October, and I am, I mean, I just want to say how thankful I am to the NHS. Mm. The team at my hospital, nurses, care assistants, cleaners, doctors, you name it, they got me back out of that hospital in a way that, I thought if I caught COVID, I wasn't coming back out mm. and received a lot of prayer and was able to pray with other people. But coming out the other side of COVID, I haven't made the rebound recovery mm. I kind of assumed. And I have long COVID, which means I can spend about four hours a day tat up and the rest of the time yeah. I'm laid down. So much mm. like Laura. And can I just say, Laura, thank you for the, all the lessons you shared with me all the advice you've given all the inspiration to keep resting and keep being me it's meant a huge amount and so I spent a lot of time resting and I digitally paint on my iPad and I write poetry and I spend a lot of time in prayer with God just quietly <laughs> it's rest it's rest it's rest it's rest that's what my life with chronic illness is like mm. and it can be hard to accept that mm. but it's all I have because if I don't rest I crash yeah yeah exactly so there's something about rest that I hold right at the front of my mind is that Jesus rested mm. he didn't just run around doing amazing miracles speaking fabulous inspirational um, uh, sermons and messages but when he was tired, he took himself away and rested. Mm. And that's become so important to me that actually, if rest was important for Jesus and part of his ministry, then those of us who need to rest should see it as part of our ministry and part of an important part of our lives. Mm. But we live in a society that's obsessed with being busy. And I don't. I mean, I think church is one of the worst. Mm. We all have to be busy and doing and achieving. And yeah, actually, everyone gets tired, don't they? Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, we may feel it more than most, but everyone gets tired. And Jesus models the importance of noticing when we need to rest. Mm. So I try and do that and try and share that. And for me, that just means praying and painting and seeing what happens and letting God speak to me. And I'm so thankful for the internet and for online presence and for being able to be lying in bed and go, Laura, this is rubbish mm. today. <laughs> yeah, and you're going, it's great. okay, I'll pray for you. And mm. Someone else on Twitter is, oh, I can't deal with this anymore. You can, let's surround you in prayer. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and also it's it's okay. It is rubbish. Mm. Rest, rest knowing that you are healing while you're resting. Yeah. I yeah. I just think the the social media can be demonized and there are lots of negatives. Mm. But I know you and I, Laura, just we found so many people needing community and they have gained community ourselves. Yeah. It's amazing. I, mm. I feel like God has brought us together to be stronger in our weakness. Mm. Oh, I could go on forever. But how about you? <laughs> Tell me about how you find it. Yeah, I think it, it's been a roller coaster. Like when I was first diagnosed with achalasia, the first of my um, proper, proper illnesses, you know, um, <laughs> um, I was at a church. I was a younger person. Um, I was in my early 20s. Um, I was surrounded by people my age in a really evangelistic church. Um, I was living in the city, working in the city. My faith was was huge. I felt God really close all the time. Um, everything was great. And it was probably the peak of what I would describe as being the closest to God. Um, obviously, God is with us all the time, but there are moments that we feel closer or far away from him. And this was definitely one of those times that I felt very close to him. Um, and although the church were not very good at supporting me in what I was going through when I became unwell, um, I had those people around me. I had that kind of background knowledge of what that meant to be living as a Christian and seeing God in those situations of daily life and the impact on work colleagues and things like that. So when I became unwell, um, everything that was happening, I was having multiple tests and tubes everywhere and, you know, things, really horrible procedures um but I was also really 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 weak I was on maybe 100 mils a day um and that was my food and water content for the day and it was it was horrible but um my family definitely struggled more than I did um because I had that faith level um, and although my parents are you know they were leaders in the church and everything watching somebody else go through that I think is almost harder than going through it yourself and so I was going through these procedures and sedations and surgeries. And every time I went into one, um, I waited for this nervousness to come and it, it never really came. And um, I always wondered why. And I knew then that it was because God was with me and I felt that peace and things were happening. And um, it, it, I felt the strength of God in me through everything that was happening. Um, and my family saw that then happening and I think it helped them to feel more settled as well um and then when I started to get better from that I was able to eat and drink again um started to get better I went to go and train at Ridley Hall in Cambridge as a lay youth minister um but whilst I was there my other conditions started coming to the forefront um and then I was really struggling because I was thinking well I'm doing this for you God like I'm being a youth minister because this is what you you know I've done this before I feel you're calling me to this what are you doing like if I was better I could do so much more for you and then I felt like I was let down I suppose is the only way I can think of it really and disappointed by God and it made me not really turn to him anymore which is ironic being a youth minister in training um but yeah it became something where it's like well if I can't trust you to do what I need you to do for me anymore why would I turn to you and so there were periods where I've gone away and gone you know chronic illness like we've said it takes a lot from you like you spend all your time in bed you can't go to church um, all the time you can't socialize with people you can't do everything that you'd want to do if you were able to do it and so that giving up of control involuntarily I think has made me more closed in who I give up control to and what I give up control to and so it has been a real roller coaster of learning when to trust God how to trust God can I trust God um and I know in my own prayer life that I found it easier to pray for other people like you've said like I can pray for people on Twitter and social media um but praying for myself is harder because I feel like I might lose my faith if God doesn't do what I'm coming to him to do and Last summer, I had this major breakdown kind of thing in my spiritual life, especially where I was just done with it. And I was like, look, God, if you're not there, what is the point of me trusting you in this? Like, you're clearly not listening to me. You're not doing what is the best for me. Um, 
And as you might have noticed there, that's me saying you're not doing the best for me rather than me saying <laughs> I'm not doing what I should be doing for you. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's been a roller coaster. Um, and the way I came out of that is by looking at You Belong, which I was doing at the time and obviously still I'm doing now. Um, and realizing what God has done through that, through me and through other people to me. Um, and it has been a slow build up of gradually trusting God with things. And there are things sometimes where I'm like, look, God, I want to go and do this. Surely, if you know, if you'd let me go and do this, it would be for you. You'd get all the glory. It'd be great. Um, and it doesn't happen. So it's definitely not easy. Like you don't I don't think maybe this is just me speaking, but I don't think that I can trust God every day or every hour like there are moments um and so I think it is finding strength in God each day is different each day depending on how I find it how I'm feeling um it might be like you said through the rest and realizing that in that time of peace with God that you're feeling rested and that you're finding him in that um and sometimes it's through the community online um sometimes it's through watching a film and being reminded of a, a word or a song or you know whatever it is um but yeah, so I think uh, it's been a roller coaster, um, and I won't say every day is easy. But I think that's that's how I how I find my strength um, in God in those situations. But it isn't always a <laughs> a clear way all the time. Um, and like with Job, he obviously had a, a very very difficult life um, through his period of testing, and God wasn't didn't seem like he was listening to him. And I think I can relate to that feeling of crying out to God. And actually, we need to be more willing to cry out to God like he's big enough to to take it he's not gonna turn away from you just because you sound a bit angry at him or whatever so I think being able to share those things with others and with him has also helped me find strength um in God so yeah um so I think it'd be really helpful in case anybody else out there that's wondering about you know some tips and tricks um is there anything else you think you could share with other people that would help them to um find their own strength in God in similar situations Emma? really similar to you Laura I, I said <laughs> top tips are to grieve mm. I I really advocate the importance of grieving mm. for what we've lost yeah because there is frustration at not being able to do those things so to grieve to cry to be cross to be frustrated all of that is it's mm. fine it's yeah important. I like a good rant to God yeah you know just uh, oh god really more pain i don't think i can deal with it mm. and then to share that with somebody i trust somebody like you who can mm. say okay let me pray into that for you mm. to be able to say those things rather than keeping them inside and feeling like they're some horrible dirty secret yeah because we feel as we feel don't we yeah and yeah. when i hold those dark emotions it makes me feel more ill god doesn't want mm. that yeah. And do you think that the church is not very good at that in general? Do you think the church is not very good at lament and grieving? Is that something that you see wider? I, I, I definitely think a lot of churches have a problem with it. Mm. Uh, that idea that we could be cross with God or feel let down. But we're human. Mm. We're only human. Yeah. I mean, Jesus cried out to God on the cross. Well, if Jesus can cry out, I, <laughs> I think I'm allowed to cry out. So. <laughs> definitely. And, we also teach God hears us mm. and God knows us and God knows what's in our hearts and in our heads. Well, so God knows I'm hurting and he's like, yes, it's okay, Emma, I hear you. I know already I'm here. Mm. So it just feels right to me to share. I also think a really important tip is to access counselling. Mm. God gave us the skills of medicine to heal us and the skills of therapy to heal us. Mm. And for me, counselling is so helpful to have a safe space to be able to share, especially somebody who understands my faith and can say to me, you are feeling really low. What does God think about that in the way that I would reflect back to somebody else? So I think that's really important. And of course, the top tip, when you're tired, rest. <laughs> when you're weary, rest. Yeah. When, when you need to just take a break, instead of feeling guilty for that, rest mm. and I wish I'd learned that 30 years ago when I was an engineer I wish I'd learned it when Rachel was a baby <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> rest enough yeah it, we all need to do that to take time away and to rest yeah oh 
speaking of which I'm really tired I'm enthused <laughs> but tired how about you Laura yep yep same same <laughs> Do we pray for each other and pray it as a blessing for anyone else who's watching who yeah. needs to rest as well? Yeah. Dear God, um, thank you for this time together. Um, I just ask that you will um, remind us of, of you in these times when we're struggling. Um, and help us to find others in this community that we can reach out to in those difficult times as well, um, knowing that they're with us, alongside us, and you are there too. I pray that you will give us prompts when we are tired, that we will rest, um, and that you will remind us it's okay to rest, and in fact, encourage that we should rest. Um, so I just ask that you will help us to be aware of those prompts and that we listen to our bodies, um, because they are also special, and um, you made them just the way they are. And so we need to be taking care of them. And that includes resting without guilt um, because you love us just as we are. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much, Emma. I hope you all have a, have a great rest of your day.